I coached basketball for 14 years. Our, our boys are seven years apart, and so I coached the first one for seven years, and then he went to junior high, or middle school, as they call it now. And then the other one was ready, so I coached him for seven years. And I didn't know a damn thing about basketball. <laughs> but like a lot of coaches, nobody else was stepping up to do it. And so I was a football player, not a basketball player. But I recruited me a really good assistant coach nice. <laughs> that played for the college team. And uh, I, I experienced a, a lot of parents that just wanted their kid to have a winning experience. They wanted them to, to do well. And so they were like, they thought, I can do it for him. I can will it. I can, I can do this. They were well-meaning, but they were just... I mean, the kid couldn't hit the ground with a ball. And it was tough. Yes, sir. Sometimes there's an advantage to having a coach that is not well-versed in the game. Well, mine were lucky okay. then. Because at, <laughs> really? Because at an early age, you want these kids to take ownership in the success of their team. Winning the game is not the only barometer of success. You want these kids to get the physical exercise, yes. You want them to have the team camaraderie, to be able to, to support their teammates when their teammates do well and support them when their teammates aren't doing as well. They're learning how to be in a civil society. And a, and a good coach understands that regardless of their ability to know the X's and O's of any game. Yeah, but they don't always do that. Now, no. you, your name is Avery, right? Yes. Avery Crude. And you were a ref. That well, you are correct. a ref. And I still a referee. Yes. But you were the president of the association. I was the, the administrator of the referee administrator. That's correct. Okay, and you, you resigned that... The position, I resigned the position of administrator because I was no longer able to support all of the referees that were being mentally, physically and verbally abused from the sidelines. You, you sent a letter yes. that uh, is one of my favorite letters. I have to read some of what you said. You said, this will be my last year as your referee administrator, and there's a reason. I have come to despise so many of you. <laughs> yes, indeed. And I hold so many of you in contempt. Your behavior on the sidelines has for far too long been disrespectful and you are damaging the children. I can no longer be involved with so many people who feel so entitled. People threatening to write up a referee because he was wearing a protective boot was the last straw. So I'm done and it's your loss. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I never wrote that letter when I was that bad coach, but I, uh, I certainly appreciate that. Go ahead. Being a coach is a job, and at the end of the day, if you're bad at your job, like some people, like, I think that if you're a good person at heart, then you'll be kind of good at coaching because you are leading children, but you also, I just think if you're a good person, you can be a good coach and you can do anything, but. Yeah, but coaches put up with a lot of abuse. And by the way, if you have some yeah. training as a coach, kids with a trained coach, the dropout rate is much lower than if you have a coach that doesn't know what they're doing. And if you've got a coach that doesn't know what they're doing, kids tend to kind of drift away. But if you've got a good coach that really knows what they're doing, they hang in there. And being a coach that doesn't know what they're doing, I'm confessing. And you say it's a job, but I, I don't remember getting paid. Uh, and those, and these refs, these refs get like $10 a game. They go out there and get like $10 a game. And then things are getting really out of control. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.